Hey there everyone, Indro here and today I will speed run through the creation of my new dawn photoshop composition. Well, this is my entry to the battle of visuals contest hosted by a very talented photoshop artist, visuals optimist. If you haven't yet checked out his profile, I highly recommend you go and check out visuals optimist on instagram. He has got really awesome and dramatic compositions. So coming back to the contest, we had to follow two rules. First is we had to use all the stock images that are provided and second is we cannot use any additional images or textures but if we wanted to add something we could manually paint them onto our composition. Now about the artwork, since the theme is dramatic, I really wanted to play with the lights and the very first thing that came into my mind after looking at the airplane wreckage was nuclear apocalypse. So I blended those ideas and tried to create something where after mankind's demise in a nuclear warfare, nature has slowly started to heal itself. And ionization in the air casting a perennial aurora, I tried to recreate a scene of dawn. So this composition took about 6 hours for me to complete and in this 15 minute videos, I'll try to go over the main process and highlight the main steps so that you can understand how I did it. So let's get started. Firstly, I added this image of the landscape and took it as my base. I darkened the sky on the top so that when I'll be adding the aurora, it really pops out. I created a scattered brush with playing with the shape dynamics and with the scattering properties and then with a bright green color, I created the basic shapes. Then I went to motion blur and added some blur to create the basic shape of the aurora. Then I kept adding variations with the same scatter brush and kept adding the motion blur to get layers of variations onto my northern lights. Then I took a yellowish green color and tried to add at the bottom region to get the core color of the lights. I changed the blending mode to screen and then I added some purples because we see some purples in the northern lights and then I merged everything convert it into a smart object and added a blur to kind of mix those harsh lines that we got from the motion blur. Then I created a layer mask and brushed away some parts from the bottom region because in northern lights we tend to have a sharper region towards the bottom and it seems to blur out on the top. Next I created another variation of the scatter brush and took color white and painted some stars onto the sky. I squeezed the lights a bit to the top because we'll be having lots of elements on the foreground and we do not cover the lights with those elements. Then I placed the image of the airplane wreckage and I cut it out from the background using pen tool and quick selection tool. Then I went for this sunset image and I thought about placing it maybe using at our base landscape but I ended up only selecting out the rocks and I hid it because I thought I might be using it at a later point of time. Then I took this rocky terrain and I thought it would be a really nice one to add in our background and it would make the composition interesting. But again it didn't work that good so I ended up having this snowy mountains because we were having some northern lights and maybe we will be having an arctic feel with this image. So I took it, I created multiple copies and I tried to recreate the distant mountains. Then with some blending I put this jungle image with the water body into our composition and I really had no idea how this would mix up because we were kind of having an arctic polar landscape and it was a bit difficult to blend these two. And then I accidentally found out that how I placed it, it kind of looked pretty good and it gave me an idea maybe a distant stream of water is coming and it's flowing through the wreckage into the foreground. So I tried to blend these images in that way. Next I again added the image of the sunset to create my sunrise and add a dash of orange to our composition. I had to use the image either way so I looked up if we at all have sunrise with northern lights and I found some pretty good examples so I thought yeah maybe I'm proceeding in the right direction. Then I also separated out the rocks from the same image of the sunset and added them to our water. Then 
then I thought it's now the right time to add those rugged stone terrain because it can add some interesting shapes and drama to our crash site. So I maxed out those rocks and placed them so that it can give an impression that the airplane crashed and it created some rocky jagged edges out of the ground. Next I placed the deer on top of the plane and with the puppet warp tool I aligned its legs so that it fits the slope of the airplane. Then I took this image and took out these two shapes and placed them on the foreground. Then I took the image of this large rock, I separated out it from the background using pen tool. I had no idea where I would place it so I ended up placing it in the very foreground on this water. And now this is the most challenging part. I could not see how I can fit this image into our composition because the trees and the leaves are mostly tropical and we are having an arctic feel to our composition. So I thought about maybe we can take out this leaf and we can place it somewhere in the crash site so that it doesn't pop out that much and it blends with the other leaves that we have in our artwork. Now for this image, I took this straw from the hut and added it on the plane to make it look that there is some debris on the crash. I took this metal texture and used it to add some crunch on our airplane wreckage. I kept it as a blending mode of overlay and experimented with also soft light and painted on the layer mask on the appropriate textures to get the look I was looking for. Then I added those leaves to make it look that some trees are growing out of this wreckage. Next I took this dead tree branch. Initially I thought about placing it on the water in the foreground but I ended up placing it inside the airplane. Then I added some boards, I separated them out and experimented and placed them to see what looks best. For the ferns, I separated them out from the white background and placed them on the foreground. For this flower swing, I took out one of them and placed it on that dead branch. Now for the grass, I placed them randomly on the ground, just keeping an eye to what looks best. Now with all the elements placed, it's time to color grade. I'll be turning everything into a nighttime scene and I'm using my nighttime color grading technique using one photo filter, having a dark blue color and the density cranked up all the way to around 90-95%, making sure that the preserve luminosity checkbox is not checked and also using a hue saturation or a vibrance layer to take down the saturation intensity. Then I added a solid color fill with a dark shade of orange or green and changed the blending mode to linear dodge and painted the highlights. If you want to see in depth how I do the highlights, I have a dedicated video on this. I highly recommend you go and check out the video. I think it will be very helpful and you will also like it. You can find the link in the description section. I use that same technique in all of my composition to paint the highlights. I use a solid color fill with a very dark shade of the color of the light that I am using and I change the blending mode to linear dodge and I paint on the layer mask with white. Here I played a bit with the shape of the northern lights. I went into free transform and played with the warp to make it more interesting and fill up the sky. Then I also used the free transform tool distort property to kind of skew and distort it so that we have that angular feel that we see in the northern lights. Here I am again painting the highlights on the boards. I am paying attention to the green light that is coming from the top right and also the orange light that is coming from the left. Here I am adding some blur to the distant mountain and adding some light color cast to give that atmospheric depth. With that done, I am painting the highlights with a green color on each and every pine tree in the distant mountain. Next I am painting the highlights to each and every element in our foreground. So this is very time consuming and I had to pay a great deal of attention to make it look perfect. The more attention I will pay to these highlights, the more realistic and natural it will look. 
you can always check out my detailed in-depth video on these highlights and shadows. The link to the video should be in the description sections. With the highlights on the objects done, I added the reflection on the water. I took a same solid color fill with a dark shade of green and changed the blending mode to linear dodge and painted on an inverted layer mask to add the reflections. Then I thought that the rocks in the water were missing some textures so I took the image of that large rock and I used it as textures on the smaller rocks. With that done I added some fireflies because this is a fantasy artwork so we'd be having fireflies. I took a same solid color field with some darker shade of green and changed the blending mode to linear dodge and painted on an inverted layer mask to add the fireflies. Next I added the reflection of the overall image onto the water. I separated out part of the water only and changed it to black and white and created a displacement map out of it. And then I created a snapshot of our composition, flipped it vertically and added that displace filter with the displacement map that I saved a moment back. And then I added some color grading, turned it a bit dark. Next I decided to fine tune things further so I went into the liquify tool and I manually distorted it to make it look that there are ripples in the water. With that done I added some global shadows and some overall color casts. And then I took a snapshot of everything and went into the camera raw filter where I adjusted the texture and the clarity and also played a bit with the contrast highlights and shadows to boost things up. And here we are with the final result. I hope you liked today's artwork and you found this video helpful in some way. If so, please feel free to subscribe my channel that would really help me to create more videos like this. Also be sure to leave a comment about what kind of artwork or tutorial video you want to see next. Well then, I'll see you in my next video and till then, enjoy creating.